students welcome to shorsas classes and today we are going to do some sums on electrostat and other chapters we will also consider in the on the way so our first sum is for an infinitely long wire with uniform line charge density lambda along the z axis the electric field at a point a comma b comma 0 away from the origin is ex cap ey cap ez cap are the unit vectors as uh, as you know and there are four options along with it so how to do this how to solve this sum uh, first first i will draw a picture first i will draw a picture and that looks like this let us consider this as a z axis and this as the x axis and along with the z axis there is the infinite line charge with the line charge density lambda the line charge density is something the amount of charge the amount of total charge that is distributed along the length of the along, along the length of the charged wire so that is qyl now if we draw the third axis y as you can see it from here and then take the point p that is as a comma b comma 0 so it is on the xy plane because the z uh, z coordinate is zero here <coughs> now now as ep e at the point p that is 1 by 2 pi epsilon not as you know the formula is lambda by modulus of op that is representing the magnitude part of it and op that can be written as a multiplication of magnitude and then the direction direction part of it okay so op by op by modulus of op is actually representing the <coughs> unit vector along with along the direction of op now simplifying now uh, simplifying this we will get writing down the expressions actually that is for op it will be root over of a square plus b square and for just op that should be a ex cap plus b ey cap <coughs> divided by root over of a square plus b square a ex cap plus b ey cap it is actually representing the vector p and in below there is a modulus form of it so if you just multiply it with the expression that is already already written here that will look like <coughs> a ex cap plus b y cap so this is the solution of this problem you can say it again and ask for any other question that you have in your minds now let us come to the second question that is written here a 1 watt point source at origin emits light uniformly in all directions if the units for both the axes are measured in centimeter then the then the pointing vector at the point 1, 1, 0 is what per centimeter square now as as uh, as the routine now as a routine ex cap py cap and ez cap are all provided and we will have to solve this problem so what is what is important here is to notice the power of the source let us write it as p is equal to 1 watt okay and the distance of the point 1 comma 1 comma 0 from the origin as you know uh, it is it is very elementary thing the d that means distance from the point distance from point 1 comma 1 comma 0 uh, and origin sorry that is a little mistake here grammatically 
so r shall be root over of 1 minus 0 whole square plus 1 minus 0 whole square plus 0 minus 0 whole square that is root over of root 2 now the intensity of the source so once you know the distance once you know the distance you know how much it is spanning how much it is spanning so if you are going to if you are going to draw a picture that will look something like this and the fill lines are coming and the fill lines are coming from this point and this is u r so the area of the surface that the fill lines are going to encompass is 4 pi r square here the intensity how we need to calculate the intensity is i is equal to p by 4 pi r square so i p is equal to 1 and 4 pi r means root 2 and there will be a whole square associated with it so that will be 1 by 8 pi now as we know the magnitude of the pointing vector is same as the intensity of the p source we will try to write down the expression that will that will define the pointing vector in this case so the pointing vector at the last step at the last step the pointing vector pointing Uh, there is a little disturbance here, uh, so battery problem. Sorry, there was a battery related issue. Issue, so we had to stay back for some time, and now we are back. Uh, let us let us consider. Let us uh, let us say about the thing that is the pointing vector that we were discussing about previously. Pointing vector is something the expression will be something like this for this sum 1 by 8 pi root 2 e x cap plus e y cap so 1 by 8 pi root 2 multiplied with root 2 and that will give you an answer of 1 by 8 pi that is i so this is our required pointing vector okay now if you are clear with it and then it is done and otherwise and then we are deciding to go to the next problem here uh, you can see it a charged particle in a uniform magnetic field b capital b is equal to b naught is z cap starts moving from the origin with velocity v is equal to 3 e x cap plus 2 e y cap the trajectory of the particle and the time t at which it reaches 2 meter above the x y plane are <coughs> so they are actually asking you about the trajectory they are, asking, they are actually asking about the x y and z coordinates okay so uh, you know the velocity first of all you know the velocity v is equal to as it is written here v is equal to 3 e x cap plus 2 e y cap and b the magnetic field the second most important thing here in this problem is equal to b e z cap now the force that is that is being experienced by the by the charged particle will be as you know it f is equal to q dot v cross b and simplifying it is very easy as you know the basic multiplication basic vector multiplications and that looks like 3 e x cap plus 2 e y cap cross b naught e z cap and it simplifies into minus 3 q b naught e y cap here q is the charge of the particle and as you can see very clearly the force is along the y-axis and that is a, that is a negative y-axis so it will go downwards force along x and z-axis as you can see there, there are no components associated with it so we can write it as 0 into e x cap plus minus 3 q b naught e y cap plus 0 into z cap 
so it is going to be 0 for x and z x and z axis so x and z components of this force are 0 now we need to find out the velocity along x and z axis will remain in, uh, they are going to be the same therefore distance above the xy plane at the time t z is equal to vz cross t that is 2 cross t t and that is t is equal to 1 second now we can see that the trajectory will be a helix and the time taken will be 1 second now going to the next question Consider a particle of mass mol m following a trajectory given by x is equal to x0 cos omega 1t and y is equal to y0 sin omega 2t where x0, y0, omega 1 and omega 2 are constants of appropriate dimensions. The force on the particle is there are four options. So one is given as central only if omega 1 is equal to omega 2, b is central only if x0 is equal to y0 and omega 1 is equal to omega 2. C always central and D central only if x0 is equal to y0 and omega1 is not equal to omega2. So we uh, so we can see that they are only concerned about uh, about the condition that will make the fourth a central one. So what to do with this kind of problems is first write down first write down the expressions that they had given in a, in this problem and that is x is equal to x0 cos omega 1 t and for y y is equal to y naught sine omega 2 t for the for the basic information if the force is going to be central the trajectory of the particle has to be circular or elliptical that is a common thing okay so what to do with this and then uh, then how can we proceed in this sum we can take x make a square of it and take y then make a square of it and then add both of them that is x square plus y square it will look like something x naught square cos square omega t plus y naught square sine square omega 2t okay now if omega 1 is equal to omega 2 is equal to omega we can write we can replace the previous expression like this x square plus y square is equal to x naught square cos square omega t plus y naught square sine square omega t okay so that will look like x that will look like a constant that that is going to be a constant so we can write it here as a constant part and we know that if x square plus y square is going to be represented is going to be a constant the the path that we are discussing about will be a closed path and that will be and the force will be due to the central force so it's very easy to track down the option that is given here that is central so the option is going to be a so if it's, it's going to be central if only omega 1 is equal to omega 2 now let us go to the next question which of the following points represent the complex number 1 by 1 minus 1 i so what to do with this kind of sum uh, it is very easy to figure out as you can see 
just write the expression as z you know we represent the complex numbers by writing z z is equal to 1 by 1 minus i now multiply the complex conjugate of 1 minus 1i in numerator and in denominator so it will turn into something like this 1 square minus i square so 1 plus i divided by 1 minus minus 1 that will be 1 plus i by 2 that is equal with 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 i now z can be written as x plus i y now comparing both sides you can see it easily that x can be replaced with 0 0.5 where y also can be replaced with 0 0.5 so these coordinates correspond to a point in the first quadrant and that is very easy to look at you can see because if you are going this place uh, along the x-axis 0.5 and along the y-axis 0.5 units you will going you are going to reach at this point and in the other pictures it is not going to match with your problem so that is the option of a <coughs> now let us go to the next problem that is the matrix question okay and it is a very good one what they are saying is the eigenvalues of the matrix representing the following pair of linear equations x plus i y is equal to 0 and i x plus y is equal to 0 so it is a problem of uh, it is a problem of eigenvalues eigenmatrices and how to how to solve this thing let us let us write let us first write the equations that is given here x plus i y is equal to 0 first equation and i x plus y is equal to 0 now we know that, that uh, these equations are linear so from these equations we can form a matrix and that will look like something like this a 1 i i 1 now uh, the standard procedure for solving the eigenvalues that is represented by lambda eigenvalue that is represented by lambda here we will have to solve this equation a minus lambda i is equal to zero now writing it in terms of the matrix that will look like one i i one minus lambda one zero zero one is equal to zero simplifying this simplifying this equation simplifying this thing we will say one minus i square minus lambda cross one is equal to zero so lambda is equal to one minus i square so it is a very basic formula to apply it like this one minus i into one plus i so there were two solutions so there are two solutions and one is one minus i and another is one plus i so looking in the options we can we can get it in d so our option is d Hope you are understanding it well and now we will move to the next problem let us go up to the ladder and that is a uh, that is a boolean equation and that is represented as y is equal to a plus b okay so the solution of this boolean equation is what they want y is equal to a plus b whole bar and y is equal to multiplication of a b and taking a bar on them so you do remember the basic pattern to solve the boolean equations and if is if it is y is equal to a plus b whole bar and plus a b bar you can write it as a b whole bar plus a bar plus b bar now taking a bar common 
from the first two expressions we will get b bar plus 1 plus b bar so that will be a bar plus b bar because we know that b bar plus 1 is equal to b bar so hope you have enjoyed um, uh, this course and now we are going to pause for some hope you people have enjoyed our course and you are going to subscribe to our channel and we will be coming back with the next part and that will be very lucid and very fun to have okay thank you bye goodbye for then